Oh hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how I did this black and white lion in pastels which was a uh, tutorial over on my Patreon. So this was a, uh, a practice piece because I was asked by a few Patreon members to have a go with pan pastels and give them my opinion. This was the first project that I decided to do with that. Now this didn't quite go how I wanted because there was a few interesting things I found when using the pan pastels which I go in depth with in the Patreon version but the the first thing I'll start off with as you can see from here this is just the pure black pan pastels that I'm using and it was not nowhere near as black as I could have got with using my black soft pastel stick by Rembrandt. If I knew how I was going to experiment with this portrait, I would have gone ahead with a black Rembrandt stick and make this background darker. But at this moment in time, when I was still doing this portrait, I was still anticipating just using pan pastels for the base layers and that background. So to apply the pan pastels to the paper, I'm using my soft tools. This is the eye makeup applicator shape. And the other one I was using is the oval, which out of the larger applicators is my favourite shape. Now this whole base layer section here is pan pastels and they blend beautifully. They are more like paint to use and I'd say that is the one thing I loved about them and I love from the start. They would be absolutely perfect for backgrounds which I'm going to be planning a pastel project coming up with. Either, it's probably going to be a landscape or a wildlife subject but it's going to have a scenic background to it because I think the pan pastels are going to be great for that. So this was the first black and white portrait that I'd done in pastels. I've done it with colour pencil on black paper before but this was as I say the first four pastels. I opted for their pastel matte anthracite coloured paper because that's the closest to black that they do. It, As you can see it's more of a, a darker grey really so I thought that that would be the best colour paper to go for but I can say that the anthracite has a far more different tooth. My details were nowhere near as soft as I typically like to get on other papers for instance my favourite pastel matte paper is the dark grey and my details on that are much smoother and much softer. The anthracite has quite a bit more of tooth to it so my details were nowhere near as crisp as I like. So if you are using the anthracite it's something to bear in mind. I don't know what, if it was just this one sheet. It was in the pad of the 18 by 24 centimetre that they do so whether or not it was faulty or whether or not all the anthracites are like this I'm not entirely sure because this is the first time that I've used it but if you do use it then it's just something to bear in mind and you can see that graininess above these details here on that left side of the face that I mentioned it's just not as smooth as I'd like to get it on my other portraits when using the other paper so the biggest thing when you're working in black and white that we're trying to capture is your contrast, your lights and your darks. You really, I mean, in this reference photo, I did hype up the highlights and drop down the shadows quite a lot to try and capture more of that intensity of the lights and the darks. I think that this type of portrait is really, really striking and that can create some really nice results. But we need to make sure we get the values correct. The lights and the darks need to be not only in the right place, your shadows and your highlights, but they need to be bright enough and dark enough. Now, as I mentioned, I was starting to experiment not just with the pan pastels, but with my other methods of putting base layers down with the pencils on their own or with soft pastel sticks. And as I say, I go in depth in my findings on my Patreon video. The almost three hour version of that is available over there. I speak you through this swatch, which I decided to do to show the difference between pan pastels as a base layer, soft pastel sticks as a base layer and pencils on their own. The, int the, the findings were really, really interesting. Pencils were nice and smooth. They got a really nice level of softness. But as we know, just using pastel pencils is really not practical for getting um, a large area covered. You'll burn through your pencils quite quickly. So I was trying to find a happy medium between using the pan pastels and the soft pastel sticks to see whether or not I could combine them to get a similar effect to how I typically like to work, which is by sanding my soft pastel sticks on a sheet of sandpaper and using my soft tools to pick up that pigment and apply it directly to the paper because I was finding the pan pastels to be quite a bit more of a um, 
a graininess to it and I wanted to make sure it wasn't anything that I was doing because as I say this was the first time that I used them but as I then used them in combination with the other methods and how I layer them I did find that I was getting very similar results to how I like to work with the sanded soft pastel sticks and the longer version shows you all these little hiccups that I found and it was quite interesting I was really glad that I did do this in pan pastels initially because it was a new way of me getting my base layers down but not only that it made me realize how I create the softness in the fur that I typically get quite a lot of messages about one of the most common things that I am contacted for is how do I get the softness in the fur and it's something that I always assumed was due to how I layer which now I know is accurate because when I was using the pan pastels on their own I was getting a grainy look now as I say I was doing that on anthracite paper and I do think that had a lot to do with it which is why I went ahead and did the elephant tutorial on and the project there I am now using pan pastels for a tiger project on patreon that I've got coming up so that again will be very similar to this lion but in color but I'm going to be putting my base layers down purely with pan pastels so that I can give them another fair go I felt that this paper was holding me back slightly so I didn't want to leave the pan pastel review there because I felt that it was probably going to be quite unfair so that's why I'd like to go ahead and do a few more projects to see whether or not I can make them work for my techniques now the, as I say they are going to be wonderful for backgrounds and if I can use them and get the effects that I'm happy with I know for a fact that I will use them a lot more for my base layer process because they go down on that pastel mat beautifully the, it really does speed up the process and the pastel dust is significantly less. There is still some pastel dust, but as I say, it is considerably less than soft pastel sticks. And I never draw the same thing twice. It's something that I have always done. However, I may make an exception on this piece and draw this same line, black and white, exactly how I have done, but on dark grey pastel mat to see the difference and compare the two. So it's something that um, I am probably going to do very soon because I'm just more for my own um, curiosity. I'm just interested to see whether or not I would get smoother results. So when you are working on something like this, once you're confident and you're comfortable with getting your lights and your darks how you want them, the next is getting the details how fine you like them and also how detailed you like to go that's more down to personal preference each artist is going to be slightly different and how much realism they're going to want to capture but I like to work with fairly sharp pencils but although it may look on some of the pencils have got more of a shortened lead I do still roll that pencil as I'm using it to keep it on a sharpened point even if it does look like it's a shorter lead so that's the biggest thing for getting nice fine details is try and keep your lead sharp or a, a, you know, a chiselled edge types and keep rolling that pencil so you can get these details nice and fine. That's how I was doing the main on this section here and holding my pencil, not putting too much pressure on it. The harder, the more pressure you put on that pencil, the thicker your lines are going to be. And for something like a lines main, that's not what we want. We want nice, fine, longer pencil strokes. So here I'm using that eye makeup applicator shaped soft tool to put down my base layers. When I'm working on a smaller project like this, that is the applicator that I will favour usually for putting my base layers down. You can be a bit more accurate and I speak about it a lot in all of my videos on here and on Patreon, how important I think your base layers are. They are they're your foundation so it's really important to make sure you put your lights and your darks accurate although we can tweak them and we can change our base layers I think it's always a good place to start to get them as accurate as you can it then makes your life a lot easier when you go and add your pencil detailed layers on top and you can see here this is a prime example my base layer is not all one color I've paid really close attention to that reference photo which is in the corner there to make sure that I'm already mapping in where my lights and my darks are it's going to help you follow that reference photo more clearly if you do get your base layers accurate at this stage 
I'm then using my black Carbofello to get my darkest shadows in first so that I know how bright to make my highlights next to it. It's something that I will often do, getting my darker values in, whether or not that's around the eye or the nose, depending on the area that I'm working on. Then I'll build up my lighter values and then I know how to better judge my lights and my darks. Going back to what I mentioned, when you're working in grayscale and something like this, that's what's going to make this portrait that much more realistic. Not really how much detail you've captured, but how striking that is to first look at it by your contrast, your lights and your darks. And this type of portrait is a really good one to work on if you do struggle with colour. Is that again is one of the most common questions that I'm asked is what colour should I use? I don't know what colour to select. How do I know what colours to mix? And quite often that can really hold us back as artists because we don't go ahead with the drawing because we're too worried about the colour. Now I had a comment here on YouTube and I think it must have got deleted by the person. I'm not entirely sure because I couldn't reply to it. It, it vanished. I couldn't even see it. It was just in my emails. And I wished that I was able to have the opportunity to reply. It was basically saying how frustrating it is when artists say you need to focus on your values more than your colour because that doesn't help. Which, yes, I appreciate that, but it's because colour holds artists back so much. We get so fixated on knowing what colour that we should use that we don't then draw, which is a real shame because then we're not going to be learning anything. But although I say you know, your values, I personally think your values are more important rather than focusing on the exact colour, obviously we still want our colour to be as accurate as we can get it. That being said, it's your values which are going to make that portrait that much more striking. If your lights and your darks are accurate but the colour is ever so slightly off, no one is going to know compared to a drawing where the colour is perfect but it's flat and there's no real difference between the the highlights and the shadows the one that's more contrast will get more attention but of course color is important but i would say that if you are struggling with knowing what color to select and you find that that holds you back i've got a video here on how to select color i'll put a, a drop down and i'll also link that in the description below for that video if that is something that you are struggling with and if you are struggling with color Working black and white like what I've done here, it takes the pressure off completely. You gain confidence with which colours, which pencils to select because we're only focusing on our greyer tones. But we still need to know whether or not that's a cooler grey or a warmer grey. So it does still help with picking out the pencils, which will then follow on for a colour based portrait as well. So I hope this video was of use. Um, if you are interested in Patreon, I will link that in the description below. As I say, the nearly three hour version of this is available over there now. And if you could give the video a like, um, a thumbs up, that would really, really help. And if you want to get notified of future videos and content that I upload, hit the subscribe and the bell button and then you should get notified of all content.